This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. When you ain't got no job and you ain't got no food in the cabinet, you know, I hear what you're saying, don't worry. But, you know, you know, you tell me your testimony about how you didn't have no food and somebody bought food in your door and knocked on the door just in the nick of time. I'm kind of scared because I don't know that many people in there and, and they don't know what I'm going through and, what, and nobody might not knock at my door. So the temptation to worry is real. But God's got your back. Trinidad and Tobago, get ready for Change Experience 2020. For one day only, join Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar, January 31st at the Hilton Conference Center. There's a mighty wind getting ready to blow through your household, getting ready to blow through this church, getting ready to blow through your life. You better get ready, honey. Put your seatbelt on. Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. Register today for free while there's still time. For more details, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. your Bible once again, let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 6, 25 through 30. Uh, I want to continue talking about no more worries. I, I don't know, for some reason I thought since I preached on it one time that people would stop worrying. It seems like I just bumped into everybody I bumped into this week, had some worries. And uh, you have to understand that uh, the enemy has a purpose for trying to amplify things in your life so that you can start worrying about things because worry can become a blessing blocker. Uh, it's not because God will uh, refuse to do anything for you. He's finished it. But a lot of things that we have access to under the covenant of grace has to be received by faith. By faith, I got to believe I receive it, amen. I said, by faith, I got to believe I receive it right now, regardless of what's going on. A grace is not going to make you have something. That makes sense? Well, I'm on the grace, and no matter what I think, God going to make me have it. No, you got to receive what has already been made available to you. Amen? Grace is, uh, is your positive response to, uh, to what Jesus has already done. So how are you responding to what has already been done? How are you responding to the finished works of Jesus Christ? And all worry tries to do is to impact your response to what Christ has already made available. If you understand that, say amen. amen. All right, let's read this out loud together. Verse 25, ready, read. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Now, let's look at this in the New Living Translation. Verse 25, I'll read the rest of it in that translation, the New Living Translation. Um, it, it is not God's will for you to live life out of worry. It is not God's will for you to live life out of stress. Um, as I was getting ready this morning, the Spirit of God showed me there's a bottom line to worry. I said, yes, yeah, fear. He says, no. There's a bottom line to fear, and I saw it. It's condemnation. People ask, why are y'all so aggressively preaching the gospel of grace? Because we're trying to get you out of condemnation because condemnation becomes the base or the foundation for fear, and fear becomes the foundation for stress and worry. And when you can get to that place of stress and worry and not understand it enough to get out of it, then it will, it will uh, cause you to, in a sense, block out what you believe and, 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 and you not believe in the way you really think you're believing. And, and the worst deception you can walk in is self-deception. I don't want you to be deceived in thinking you believe in something when the evidence is not there, all right? Now, watch this. He says, 
That's why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Bam! Now, how many of you are not worrying about everyday life? Don't you raise your hands up? No, 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 y'all know. Sure. You might not worry today about, but we've all have had the potential to worry about everyday life. Now, I, I want you to get to the point where it can knock on the door, but you don't answer it. Amen? And, and I, I don't want to get too super out there because, you know, I, I want to try to stay on a place where I can relate with everybody so it'll be easy for you to cross over. I don't want to get up here and tell you, well, you know, praise the Lord as a pastor, I don't worry about anything. That's a dog, that's a line of link in your breath snake kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> that, that's, you know, there's some times when when I allow for worry to come in and I have to catch myself and say, wait a minute, do you believe God? Okay? And so some of you are, it's Sunday and you're at church and I'm talking about worry and I'm sure it sounds really awesome for you to be able to say, oh, praise the Lord, I don't worry about anything and I'm worrying about you being a liar right now while you're saying that. <laughs> And so he says, that's why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. I mean, you know, everyday life is something, isn't it? Everyday life is, is pretty interesting, and it's, it's getting very interesting in our country, and it doesn't take much to cause you to be tempted to worry. Just turn the television on. <laughs> or go to Instagram or Facebook or all them other things. And... He says, I tell you, don't worry about everyday life. Now, there's a reason why you don't have to worry about everyday life. And I'm going to use this phrase throughout this sermon today. It's because God's got you. Turn to people and say, God got you. God got you. So I don't have to worry because God's got me. And when worry knocks on the door, you remind yourself, God's got me. He says, whether you have enough food or drink or whether you have enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food for your body? Is it, it's more than clothing. It's more than, you know, you know, worrying about what you're going to eat. Now, hold on a minute. Those are pretty hot items. <laughs> food and clothing and, and water, what you're going to drink. You know, I, I understand you come up and say, well, the Bible says you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, that, that, that's easy when you got food in the cabinet. <laughs> but when you ain't got no job and you ain't got no food in the cabinet, you know, I hear what you're saying, don't worry. But, you know, you, know, you tell me your testimony about how you didn't have no food and somebody bought food in your door and knocked on the door just in the nick of time. I'm kind of scared because I don't know that many people and they, and, and they don't know what I'm going through and, and nobody might not knock at my door. So the temptation to worry is real. But God's got your back. Amen. So he said in verse 26, the New Living Translation, he says, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but your heavenly Father feeds them. This is awesome. The heavenly Father has experience of taking care of his creation. And he says, aren't you far more valuable to God than the birds are? And the answer to that is yes. 27, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? No. 28, and why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work. They don't make their clothing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are. 30, and if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Now, he's not talking about the size of your faith. He's talking about why is it that one day you can believe God and the next day you don't believe God? Why is your faith short? It's like having a short burst of energy. Why do you have a short burst of faith? Why, why is your faith short or little? It lasts little. Here, I'm about to build your faith up, but the question is how long will it last before you go back to worrying again and kind of forget about everything you hear, hear, hear today? 
Next verse. He says, so don't worry about these things, saying what we will eat, what we will drink, what we will wear. Don't worry about these things. Some, of, some people don't come to church because they're worried about what they wear. Now, the real issue is you're worried about what people think about what you wear. And that's part of the, another little foundation of just being so in bondage to people, yeah. just so concerned about what other people have to say about you or think about you. And then it leads back into condemnation well, maybe it's not enough, you know, and you start looking at what you're wearing. I just got to be honest with you. I ain't feel like wearing no suit. I've been on a suit all week, and I ain't feel like wearing, I can't say not wearing nothing, but I felt, I felt like I could have closed my eyes and said, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I didn't really care. Oh, but what are they going to think about you about wearing no suit? I am free from people's opinion. God got me. Now, if you can't handle a pastor that doesn't have a robe on every Sunday you come to church, I'm not the guy for you. That's, I want to be your pastor, but, you know, I don't want to wear a collar every Sunday. I don't want to wear a collar. And then when I leave here and go by the store and I got my collar on, people will say, Father. And I'm like, I'm not a father. <laughs> you have to do that one. I, I remember back in the day when um, they had the, collars. Chapel Hill Harvester used to make these collars, and, and they had the shirt and the collar, and, 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 and so I'm, I'm going to wear this collar shirt, and, and, I'm, I'm, and I think my reason was because I want to make sure I'm not <laughs> embarrassed of God by letting people know that I'm in the ministry. You remember we wore those collars just choking, you know, a little had help, help, and we go out to eat and have the collars, and they thought we were Catholic. <laughs> Father, and I'm just in bondage, just in, we, we all used to wear those collars, remember that? Just in bondage, and, and I was like, wow, you know. And now, sometimes when I put a suit on, it, it's been such a long time since I, I'm having to get used to the suit again. Here's what I'm trying to say. Don't worry about your clothing or what you're going to wear. You're going to worship God. He'll take you if you come here with a sweatsuit on, you understand? So in this church, don't have the pressure of, well, I would come to church, but I ain't got nothing to wear. You are, you are a wonderful person. <laughs> You're just awesome. Just find something and put it on and come to church and learn how to be free from people and learn how to be free from people's opinion. Don't let somebody's opinion bring condemnation over your life. You're coming to worship God. You're not coming for a fashion show. Walking down the aisles is not like walking and modeling. Nobody's paying you attention anyway. Just come on in so that Jesus can minister to your life and it can be better. Start being free from people so you can help people be free. All right. He says, uh, verse 32, Listen, let me get on. I got a lot to talk about. He says, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. All these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all of your needs. So don't let these things dominate your thoughts. Don't let these things dominate your thoughts. Now, I want to just kind of freestyle here just for a moment. I want you to see, see what we're saying. Go to uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 3. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 3. So the key to staying away from a worried, filled life is to learn how important it is to enter into the rest. Everybody say rest. rest. I define rest as not as inactivity. Rest is not inactivity. So when I use the word rest today, I'm not talking about becoming inactive, keeping your pajamas on and not doing nothing. That's not what I'm talking about. When I speak of rest, there's a rest that the Bible talks about that we can enter into a rest where we can rest in work versus resting from work. I'm not talking about resting from work. I'm talking about resting in work. Why? Because Jesus has already finished the work. And so we can rest in what is already done. So I'm talking about when I use the word rest, I'm talking about doing what you have to do. You go to work, 
you know, you got to pay your bills. You do what you have to do, but now you're not worrying about anything. You're not stressing out over it. It's not a big deal. You've, you've, you've taken a chill pill. Mm-hmm. Turn to your neighbor and say, take a chill pill. <laughs> you know, you, you can complain if you want to, but it's not going to help out in this area. I mean, take a chill pill. Learn how to do what you have to do but you're not stressing out, you're holding on to your peace, you're confident about what has already been done, you're you're resting in work, praise God, and and instead of resting from work. And so you end up getting a whole lot more done because while you're resting doing what you do, praise God, you got God working on your behalf because you you can become more productive in rest than you can in stress. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so how can I tell if I'm really, really at, at rest? And, and I guess the, 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 there are two questions here. How can I tell when I'm really at rest? One, how can I tell when I really, in, in, really believe? Because one will affect the other. You see, look what he says here in this verse of Scripture. For we which have believed do enter into rest. So it, belief, when you believe what Jesus has done, when you believe the finished works of Jesus Christ, you can enter into a confident, peaceful rest while you do what you have to do. And this is a stressful world we're living in. And, it, and, and we will be more effective when we can rest in what Jesus has done versus being stressed in what everybody else is doing. So he says that the person who believes, so, so listen to me now, The number one fear that Satan puts on Christian people is the fear that what God promised in his word won't come to pass. And so if you're a born-again Christian, your concern is going to be, is this going to happen? Am I sure that this is going to happen for me? Remember the guy in the Scripture, he says, I believe God can heal, but will he heal me? And so what happens is, when you really believe, then you will, you will show that you really believe by entering into the rest and, and coming from the stress. You'll, you'll leave your work of trying to do it, and then you'll do what you do because you trust in what Jesus has already, already done. And so what happens is, do you, 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 fear says, I don't believe God's going to do what he promised. Fear says, will this really happen? Fear says, can this really happen for me? And so you have to resolve that issue because that's the number one fear that Satan puts on Christian people, the fear of, 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 of wondering if this promise is going to come to pass. So the Scripture says, now when you believe, you enter into the rest. So when I look at your life and you say, oh, yes, I believe what Jesus has done for me, but you're stressing, you, you, you're not, you don't really believe it. You don't really believe it. The authenticity of your belief will be demonstrated in your rest. Will I find you at rest or will I find you stressed? Go to the doctor. Doctor says, looks like you have cancer. All right, you said, I believe I'm healed, but you're stressing out all the time. You're you're thinking about believing it, but you've not really, you know, you don't really believe because you haven't entered into the rest. You're, you're, you're believing out of stress. Think about that. Instead of believing out of rest. Rest will authenticate. Is the authentication that you believe. Say out loud, I believe the finished works of Jesus. I believe the finished works of Jesus. Next step is to enter into the rest. All right? Now look at verse 11, Hebrews 4 and 11. He says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. So... Entering into the rest is going to be a labor. You're not working to get healed. Jesus has already healed you. You're you're working to maintain your belief and the victory, your belief in the victory of healing. In other words, if Jesus has already healed you, then then you you say, you know, today you say, all right, I'm healed and I'm going to rest in that. And then tomorrow they come up with another bad report. All right, now that's a temptation trying to rob you of your rest. So you have to fight to stay at rest. Glory to God. What does that look like? You know, doctor told you a bad report and and you thought it was getting better and actually it was getting worse. And and when he told you the report, you say, no, 
I believe I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Doc, you do what you do, but I serve a doctor that's never lost a patient. I thank God that I'm healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, I'm healed. Hallelujah. I'm, what are you doing? You're laboring to stay at rest. And then, you know, you, you'll have peace that'll come and it'll come through, but maybe the next 10 minutes, the, the same fear might come up, and now you go to laboring again. No, 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 no. I tell you, Jesus has done it, and I believe I receive it in Jesus' name, and you're, you're entering into the rest. It may come up another 15 minutes. See, this is, the, this is what uh, the, a picture of laboring. It's like, thank you, Jesus. It's worshiping and praising God. Father, I just give you praise. Oh, Father, I thank you for this. Yeah, these are things that you're doing to labor to enter into the rest. I'm not laboring to, to prosper. I'm not laboring to try to get healed. I, I'm not laboring to try to be delivered. Jesus has prospered me, healed me, and delivered me. I am laboring to stay at rest and peace in what I believe he has done. Amen. That's what it looks like, okay? Now, uh, I, I, I think this may be all right, 1 Peter, let's go, to, go over that real quick. 1 Peter 5 and 7, look over that, then I'll be ready to preach, I think. 1 Peter 5 and 7. You are very familiar with this scripture. He says, cast in all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Now, what did he just say? <laughs> You're just reading what I just read. What did he say? Just, just interesting enough, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but how many of you this past week, you were confronted with some cares of life? Amen. Okay. All right. Now, here's the most important question. How many of you still have those cares? Thank you for being honest. Okay. So, humility is a person who will line up in agreement with what God asks, casting all your care on him. Okay. Pride goes against what God wants you to do. Okay, can I be very honest? A man that will cast his care on the Lord is a humble man. And the Bible says, and I'll give him more grace. The guy that doesn't cast his care is a prideful man. And he doesn't get more grace, but grace is still available for him because that's just how God is. But now listen to me very carefully. It makes it real difficult for you to receive from God when you have decided that you're going to do this on your own. So even though grace has made things available, to not cast your care means I don't believe that he can do no more about it than I can, so I'm going to keep it. Mm. Mm. To cast your care means I trust and believe God, and I'm going to rely confidently on him and lean on him, so I'm through. I'm casting this over on the Lord. Praise God. God, you got it. And, and, and that's really difficult for people to do because it's, it's asking you to trust in the promise that he made to you and sometimes that heart. That's hard. I'm trying to really just stay on the level that we're on this morning. It's difficult to do this sometimes. God is saying, cast the care. You're saying, no. I might not be able to do nothing about it, but at least I can just worry. And you think somehow you're, you're making progress by holding on to it and worrying. You are making progress. You're making progress with diseasement. You're making progress with wrinkles and gray hair. You're making progress with not filling up to anything. You're, you're, you, do you understand when there is no ease in your life and you, your life is dis-ease? Do you understand that emotional diseasement will eventually transfer into your physical body to dis-ease, disease? Number one reason that people are sick today is not because they eat a hamburger, it's because they're stressed out. Yes, yes. That you don't know how to let stuff go. Y'all just don't understand. No, you don't understand that you have access to a God who wants to remove your burdens and destroy your yokes. But he can't do it if you keep that opportunity away from him by holding on to it. 
He is saying, give me an opportunity. Lean on me. Rely on me. Cast this over on me. I see where you're weak, but that's when I'm strong. I see what you're going through, but that's where my grace can be sufficient. Try me, the Lord says, and you will love it once you see what I can do. Did you know worry is a wrong form of meditation? We all go through things in our life that bring about uncertainty and doubt. Some of y'all get up with the same worry that you went to sleep on, and you wake up and you continue in it, and you, you gotta let it go. I often think about moments where challenges have been at the forefront, and I've been tackling these challenges and they've now become priority, but then this message somehow just brought me back into trust. Dude, why am I complaining? I am too blessed to be complaining and worried about this. It's gonna be all right. For a love gift of $30 or more, we would like to offer you The Contrast, Self-Effort versus Rest, four message series, along with Creflo Dollar's book, Overcoming Fear. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. look in the mirror daily and ask ourselves questions. Am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Did I work hard enough? What if you found out before you could ever be good? God gave you the very thing you're crying out for. No more settling for second best. Get all God has for you. Radical Women's Ministry presents Worth, a women's conference. Come out for the annual gathering of women, March 19th through the 21st. Hosted by me, Taffy Dollar, featuring Dr. Dee Dee Freeman, Laura Pickett, with musical performances by Miranda Curtis and Demita Chandler. Don't miss impactful sessions, life-changing worship, and fellowship like no other. Join thousands of women as we learn about an infinite God who declares our value. Register now at taffydollar.org. Cleveland, Ohio, get ready for Change Experience 2020. For one night only, join Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar at the Huntington Convention Center. There's a mighty wind getting ready to blow through your household, getting ready to blow through this church, getting ready to blow through your life. You better get ready, honey. Put your seatbelt on. Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. We have to be certain of God's love and God's value for us and God's plan for us. Because if we're certain of that, then we can begin to turn fear on its ugly head and not allow it to come in and rob from us another day of our lives. God has something in store for you. Don't let nothing get in the way of it. I don't care if all your friends say they don't want to go no more. Come by yourself. Matter of fact, you ain't never alone because God always with you. The session time is 7 p.m., so don't delay. Register today for free while there's still time. For more details, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.